other's houses. They took each other's cars. What's the real deal? I don't believe that. Um, I do. I have heard of Jordan before. I've never met him. I've heard a lot of terrible things about him. I don't know the truth in it. Um, I, I don't have anything nice to say about him because David. Remember how I told you guys earlier that I thought that most likely Jordan was the outsider in this friend group? I think this is more evidence that kind of shows that that may be true. Because when it comes to the three men who died, there's no dispute there. Everyone says that these three guys were good friends. All of the families know each other. All of the families know of the three men. And even when it comes to the fifth friend, the families know the fifth friend. The families have talked to the fifth friend. But when it comes to Jordan, there seems to be some exaggeration on Jordan and his lawyer's behalf as to how close these guys really were because none of, none of the families seem to really know Jordan. Most of the people never met Jordan. Some of them never even heard of Jordan and the things that they have heard of Jordan, none of them have been good things. So if, if there wasn't a tragedy here, it would be kind of sad when you think about it. Because is this a situation where Jordan really felt like he was really close to these guys? When in reality, these guys weren't really that close to Jordan. Maybe they didn't really like Jordan or accept Jordan. They kind of hung around Jordan because of what Jordan could have provided. And it makes you question, what else are we being lied to about? I think it's safe to assume at this point that we're not getting the truth or we're not getting the full truth simply because the story has changed so much. But are we even being lied to about the relationship between these individuals? Because on one side, we got, oh, Jordan was such good friends with them. He would never do anything. He would always make sure they were okay. Then on the other side, everyone's scratching their head like, who the hell is Jordan? Oh, yeah, that guy that they said was off mentally? The guy I've heard weird things about? Like, what's really going on here? I mean, and honestly, I don't even, I don't even know if I've even heard I, mean, I don't think I've ever heard any stories about Jordan at all. I, I think I've heard the name and that's it. Now, I have made it very clear time and time again that in my opinion, I don't think Jordan necessarily killed these three guys. I think that something happened, an accident happened, and I do think that Jordan maybe had knowledge about what happened. I don't think that Jordan was just sitting in his house oblivious for three days that his friends were dead. But I don't necessarily think that he killed them intentionally or anything like that. But if we were to explore that avenue, what would be the motive, right? I think a possible motive is sitting right here in front of us. On one hand, we got Jordan who seems like may possibly feel like he's really good friends with this with these guys. It's obvious that these three guys are really close and Jordan isn't as close to them as they are to each other. Maybe Jordan wants to be the fourth musketeer. Maybe Jordan wants a a friendship with these guys that is as tight as the th as the friendship that they have with each other. And then you hear various family members speaking out about how, oh, we don't really know Jordan. Oh, well, the things we've heard is that he's off mentally. He's not quite right. We've heard bad things about Jordan. Is there a possibility here that Jordan's been desperately trying to be their friend and maybe Jordan heard that they were talking behind his back? Maybe Jordan knows that or are caught whiff of the fact that these guys aren't really as cool with him. Maybe they're not really, you know, as close with him as they are with each other. Maybe there's inside jokes going on in this friend group 
that Jordan doesn't pick up on. Maybe Jordan feels like they're making fun of him. You know, we don't know the dynamic between these individuals, but if we were to think, why would Jordan kill these people? Is that possibly a motive? Is that possibly a motive? Now, like I said, before anyone runs wild, I don't think that Jordan purposely killed these people. But I could be wrong, and I do think that anything is possible. So if we're exploring those possibilities and we're searching for a motive, I do think we have this big discrepancy that is, you know, unfolding right in front of our faces as to how close all of these people were. And we know that they were telling at least their family members that Jordan was weird. Were they telling other friends that Jordan was weird and Jordan heard about it? Was Jordan maybe just trying to take out one person, but because these three people were so close, they all drunk the same drink or they did the same thing and Jordan didn't intentionally take out three people. He only wanted to go for one or two. There's so many possibilities here. But all I'm saying, if we're searching for a motive, that may be a motive that's sitting right in front of our faces. The sad reality that Jordan couldn't accept that he would never fit in, that he would never be as close to these guys as they were to each other. No matter how many tickets to Chiefs games he bought, no matter how open he allowed his house to be for football parties and what have you. But I didn't even, when, when I said, who's, whenever I got the phone call, I said, who's Jordan? So I didn't even know who Jordan was. And oh, I guess the question is, is this a possible motive? that is just sitting here right underneath our noses or what's probably more likely is this just another one of jordan's lies because the lies the inconsistencies they continue to add up from what jordan's lawyer has been saying these these guys were good friends they were such good friends that Jordan wouldn't think twice about going to sleep and allowing these guys to just hang out in his house. They were such good friends that Jordan could go to sleep, tell the guys bye, and the guys would feel comfortable enough to just say, huh, well, I guess we're just going to go back into Jordan's house without his knowledge and continue to hang out. The lawyer makes it seem like these guys are always together. These guys drive each other's cars. It's no, it's no big deal. These guys leave their cars outside of Jordan's house all the time. But then the girlfriend and the families of the three men who died, they're like, who the hell is Jordan? Oh, that guy that our son said was kind of mentally off, that wasn't quite right, that Jordan? And the girlfriend's like, Jordan, I have, maybe I heard of Jordan, I don't know. But let Jordan and his lawyer tell it, these guys have been best friends since high school. They're hanging out all the time. Oh, they got a key to Jordan's house, basically. They can just walk into Jordan's house and hang out without him whenever they want. That's basically what the lawyer has stated. Yet no one seems to really know who Jordan was. No one else knows who Jordan is. So this is what I have to work with here, people. It's not me coming up with different stories. It's not me getting the stories wrong. This is what we're dealing with. And there's no like law enforcement or investigators out here doing press conferences, letting us know what's real and what's fake. We got the families saying one thing and we got Jordan and his lawyer saying the other. And both of them are drastically different. We go from, oh, best friends, you could come in our house and do whatever you want, even when I'm not here, to, oh, we don't even know who Jordan is. Let me know what you think. What do you believe? Do you think these guys were really close? Do you think Jordan's lying about how close they were? Do you think the families got the story right? Do you think maybe the families don't know something? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. While you're down there, if you're feeling generous, you could donate to the channel via Cash App or you could donate via Super Thanks, or for free, you could help the channel by liking the video, subscribing, ringing that notification bell, and all of that good stuff. But with that being said, I'll talk to you all very soon in the next one.